is it likely that the museum or perhaps an insurance company would pay some kind of a, a ransom, ransom similar to a kidnapping here? Well, I'd certainly hope not. I mean, a ransom would be utterly counterproductive. Um, mm -hmm. Paying ransoms to these sorts of criminals is, a, is, is utterly the wrong thing to do. However, paying a reasonable reward to somebody for information to lead to the recovery of these two pictures, and uh, all being well, the, the um, apprehension of these criminals, that would be great, but, um, and it would be the right thing to do as well. But, but ransoms are just out of the question because you mm -hmm. just encourage these people to keep stealing things mm -hmm. this way, mm -hmm. and that is wrong. Yeah. I agree with that about ransom. If, if we in the United States certainly uh, uh, don't uh, believe in ransoms, whether it's for uh, paintings kidnapping or the kidnappings of individuals, uh, because we know very well that once you start paying ransom, there won't be a painting left on a museum or any other wall. Sharon, are we going to inevitably see a much better security now? at art museums across the world. I mean, it seems that uh, these were not protected terribly well. Well, frankly, um, this, the kind of security, uh, the security varies from museum to museum around the world. You don't often hear about museum thefts in the United States. Uh, obviously, the Gardner Museum um, is a major exception. Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, theft from major museums is rare here. Um, often it's an inside job or there's some connection to an inside job when it's done. But each time there's a major theft, one learns from the theft. Um, and what we saw in the Munch Museum was a new pattern and a very scary one, which is a brazen theft in daylight in front of uh, visitors uh, with, a, 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 with a, and the thieves were armed with guns so that um, it's very hard to protect any painting against that kind of a threat. Uh, if a gun is pointed at a guard, one doesn't know what, one, what would happen. Charles, very quickly, based on your experience as an investigator, is it your impression that we're going to see the scream turn up fairly quickly or not? I, I think if the police get lucky, we'll see it soon. If not, it's going to take a longer time. These things fall into, into sort of a storage pattern. They become stashed. and then. It takes a long time to, for people to, to, to bring them out, um, you know, assuming that they're, 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 they're a group of individuals involved. They all argue amongst themselves. So it's, a, it's a mess. But it, it can be done. It will be done. And I think, frankly, it'll be done for the Gardner Museum as well in time. Mm -hmm. Charles Hill and Sharon Flesher, thank mm -hmm. you very much for joining us tonight. When we come back, an update on the latest fighting in Iraq. We're going to take a closer look tonight inside the murky world of international art thieves. The theft of Edvard Munch's The Scream this week, one of the most recognizable paintings in the world, was only the latest in a series of high-profile heists. The Art Loss Register, a group that tracks stolen art, says up to 150,000 objects of great art are currently missing. So the questions, why is art theft so easy and where does the stolen art end up? ABC's David Wright takes a closer look. Today, the most powerful image of despair at Oslo's Munch Museum was the look on tourists' faces. They were stolen. Really? Oh. Two of Munch's masterpieces stolen by masked gunmen so clumsy they dropped the paintings twice as they made their getaway. It's now Thomas Cran dashing around in fantastic Savile Row suits. Um, stealing beautiful pictures in a very elegant way, um, but the motivation does tend to be purely money-driven. Five and a half billion dollars worth of art has been stolen just in the past century. Among the works that are still missing, nearly 200 Rembrandts, nearly 300 Chagalls, and nearly 500 Picassos. Interpol circulates a regular list of the world's most wanted art, but catching the crooks can take decades because famous paintings are tough to sell. This $30 million Cezanne was stolen in 1978. When a Russian syndicate eventually tried to sell it, the painting popped up in a database and was returned to its rightful owner 21 years after the theft. There's clearly a black market in stolen art, but art investigators say buyer beware. Often the thieves make forgeries of the works they steal. They tell you buy, is, you have to buy because it's stolen and you will pay less. Eh? and actually is a forgery. Another possibility, the thieves try to ransom stolen paintings for the insurance money. Not an option in Norway. Like many museums, their policy doesn't cover theft. The premiums would be too pricey, and the works are irreplaceable anyway.
this theft is a kind of a wake-up call to the museums around the world, galleries around the world, but also the art insurance industry. A wake-up to museum security experts, too. At the Louvre, the Mona Lisa sits behind bulletproof glass, but that's the exception. In most galleries, the artwork is more exposed to the tourists and the art thieves. David Wright, ABC News, Rome. Our closer look for tonight. When we come back... Transformed into a vision of Christian courage.